Okay, so premise of these videos is each week we're looking at a different music idea and how it relates to riffs. Um, how we can use them to to make riffs, usually metal riffs. Okay, so this one is based on five notes evenly in the space of a beat, also known as quintuplets. This is a more unusual subdivision to use. Most of the note values we use are based on two or three or multiples of two or three, right? So five is kind of its own thing because five doesn't fit into either of these. So for that reason, it has kind of its own sound. There's not too much to explain, but I do have a few things to say about it. So I think a big factor in the, the feel and flavor of music is how your notes relate to the beats. I mean, you can have music without much of a time value, but, but this is a fundamental thing to most of the music we listen to, right? So, for example, if you're playing sixteenths, four notes evenly per beat, if you play sets of notes that last for two sixteenths, one and two and... Or four sixteenths... Eight sixteenths. These are always going to match up to the beats in, in a similar way, which has this very stable kind of regimented sound, which a lot of the time you might want. That's not a bad thing necessarily, um, but too much of it can, can get boring. So to inject a bit of colour in, you can, you can play patterns and play sets of notes that, that don't match up nicely in the same way. Everything will still be in time, but you'll have a more interesting sound because it'll sound like what you're playing is is shifting across the beat in a, in a more pleasant way because your ear is noticing that different notes are falling on the beats. Uh, so what does quintuplets have to do with this? Well, as I see it, there's three main ways to mess with your relationship between the notes and the beats. Or three ways to think of it, at least. You could argue that these are kind of the same thing. We're just thinking about it in different ways. But it, it doesn't matter. That's overcomplicating it. You can add or remove notes. You can make your, make your phrase longer or shorter. Um, we can move the beat around. Um, so we can move... We can keep our notes the same and move the beat around. Or we can change the note values. Or to put it another way, we can squash more or less notes into the same space. Um, and by space, I mean beats or bars. So so now, to finally get onto quintuplets, using these more unusual note values just gives you more options to get different effects without, without having to change your, your actual notes. Okay, so to an example, let's say we want to play up and down a four-note arpeggio and we want to repeat it every two bars. Beats, not bars. Obviously, this is a somewhat arbitrary choice, but I'm trying to do something that illustrates what I said before. Or if you want a more legitimate reason, we could say that limitations can be a useful creative tool. If we start with eighth notes, it would sound like this. So there's two notes for beat. One and two and... <laughs> So that one's not bad, actually. Um, it'd be better for the the narrative arc of this video if uh, if the first option was rubbish, but but it isn't really. Um, that might count. That might sound cool at a faster tempo, uh, and we've got this cool big interval jump at the end, which is kind of cool. Um, it's nice and dramatic. The only thing is that we never get down the arpeggio again. We uh, we only go up and then drop back to the start. Uh, and we said we wanted to get through the arpeggio, so that one's not bad. Maybe we'll give that one seven interest points out of ten. Next would be triplets, which would sound like this. One and two and... This one's not as cool because everything lines up so nicely that we're just going to go up and down smoothly with nothing to, to break it up. This is something that I seem to say in every one of these videos, but we'll, we'll say it again. That's not a wrong option or a bad option. Um, just going up and down smoothly like that might be great for a lot of contexts, even in, even in metal. Um, you, don't have to, you don't have to have the interest level of every single 
every single layer, every single element of every second of your song be at one thousand percent ultra ultra complicated. Um, I think there's there's something to be said for um, well, we often talk about dynamics in music, right? Um, but uh, dynamics just means like change or like like variance, doesn't it? But often when we say, or usually when we say dynamics, we're talking about volume, um, volume dynamics. But I think there's something to be said for a kind of interest dynamics or complexity dynamics as well. You can kind of, uh, you can kind of increase the impact of a more complicated part by having a simpler part before it or a simpler part after it, or you can, or maybe you can make the simpler part sound heavy by by having a, a more noty, more complicated part before it. So, so the so the triplets option isn't bad. It's just uh, it's just not as interesting as the others so far. Um, so for the purposes of this, uh, we'll give it we'll give it four out of ten interest points and and move on. We've done two. We've done three. Next is four notes per beat or sixteenths, which sounds like this. One and two and this one is okay. Um, we're getting past one whole up and down set of the arpeggio, but for me, it sounds a bit stilted. It sounds like it wants to repeat and then cuts off because it gets one note through the arpeggio and then and then starts again. Um, that can be a cool sound in of itself, cutting things off before you're expecting it and repeating them. But compared to the the next option, it's yeah, it's yeah, not not amazing. Okay, so we've done two, we've done three, we've done four. You can see where I'm going with this. Next, we're going to do five. So five sounds like this: one and two and. <laughs> So for me, this is the jackpot. This is this is the coolest one so far. Um, now we get all the way through the arpeggio three times, up and down and up again, and then we get the big the big eleventh leap back down to the start, like we had in the eighth note version. So this would be an instance where, for me at least, fives is is a cool option, and in fact the best option. Another thing to bear in mind if you want to do something with these sorts of alternate picked arpeggios across the strings is that this is much easier than this. With the, the six string version, I'll very quickly make a mistake, but the, the four string version, I can probably play that for a long time without making a mistake. Hopefully. Um, so, yeah, if, if you write something like this or play something like this, um, in order to play it, you might want to start with four strings first or even less strings before you move up to six. Okay, I think that's the end. If you if you watched all the way to the end, wow, what a nice person. Thank you so much. If it was interesting at all, um, just hit the buttons, subscribe, and I'll be putting out new ones every week. I think this, this one was a bit longer than a week, but I'm going to try and do them every week. So, yeah, subscribe if you want to see more of these. Uh, thanks for watching. Bye for now.